Blue Hole is basically just a massive sinkhole in the ocean, and they can take over 100,000 years to form. You see, back in the ice ages, the sea was hundreds of feet lower than it is today, and solid rock gradually eroded away by environmental factors like acidic rainwater to form vast cave systems. You clicked for the deepest mystery, and you're in the right place. In 2018, two submarines descended into Belize's Great Blue Hole, a circular chasm that sinks more than 400 feet into the Caribbean seafloor. It's beautiful from above, almost too perfect, a dark sapphire disk surrounded by living reef. But below the surface, it hides a secret, one that has challenged scientists, divers, and storytellers for decades. When that expedition went down, they expected geology, maybe some new readings of stalactites, or a clearer map of the floor. What they found instead were three things that shouldn't coexist. Perfect circular tracks etched into the sediment, modern human trash lying untouched in a place that should erase all movement, and the remains of divers who vanished long before. Three layers of evidence, three records of time, written into a hole that swallows both history and hope. Stay with me. We'll go step by step, from the light above, through the hydrogen sulfide layer where oxygen dies, to the dark stillness below, where time stops keeping score. And by the end, you'll have to decide which clue matters most, and what we're supposed to learn from it. The Great Blue Hole began as a cave, carved when the world was cold. During the last ice age, sea levels were more than 100 meters lower than they are today. Rainwater, slightly acidic, seeped through the limestone bedrock and began to carve tunnels. Over thousands of years, the water shaped vast caverns filled with stalactites and stalagmites, stone dripping onto stone, measuring time in drops rather than seconds. Then the ice melted, the seas rose, and those caverns drowned. What had been dry land became a flooded monument, a near-perfect circle where a roof once stood, now open to the sky. From above, it looks like geometry drawn into the ocean, a blue eye staring upward through coral and time. Each terrace that steps down its inner wall marks a former sea level. They are like ancient shorelines, frozen mid-tide, a record of how fast and how often the Earth has breathed in and out. Even the stalactites inside lean ever so slightly in one direction, a clue that the crust beneath Belize shifted after the cave formed. In that tilt lies a record of tectonic motion, proof that even bedrock remembers the slow grind of continents. The Great Blue Hole is not just an underwater cave, it's a history book, one written in limestone instead of ink. At the surface, the water is alive. Fish circle coral heads, sunlight filters down in rippling sheets, and parrotfish click at the reef like typewriters. But descend 200 feet, and the color begins to change. The blue darkens, the pressure thickens around you. And then, just before 300 feet, a yellow haze appears a layer that smells faintly of sulfur and death. This is the hydrogen sulfide boundary, a dense chemical divide between the living ocean above and the dead archive below. It looks like fog under water. It blinds cameras, stains the light, and steals oxygen from the water column. It's the point where life stops negotiating. Cross that line and you leave the world of metabolism behind. Sound dulls, Movement feels slow, as though the water itself resists your presence. Your voice vanishes into the regulator, and the light fades to an oily brown. Below that layer, oxygen is gone. Decay, the ordinary process that turns the dead back into the living, collapses. What dies here, stays. On the seafloor, that stillness becomes a kind of preservation. Shells lie scattered across the sediment, conch, gastropods, and the occasional fragment of coral. Some are trailed by faint grooves that run a few feet, then stop. They look like small sentences written in the mud, half finished. Those tracks tell a quiet story. Each line is a final attempt by a creature to crawl upward toward breathable water. 
Each one ends where oxygen disappears. Death mid-motion, frozen by chemistry. Because below the sulfide line, decomposition slows almost to nothing. Microbes that need oxygen go dormant or die. Even bacteria that can survive the poison work so slowly that decay can take decades. Shells retain their shine. Wood persists. Even plastic remains clean, its edges unblurred. Imagine a place where entropy hesitates, where the normal eraser of time stops working. That's what the bottom of the blue hole is. An archive built by nature, curated by chemistry, and written in layers of still water. That's why, when researchers began mapping the bottom with advanced sonar, what they saw didn't make sense. The team used a 3D imaging system, a Kongsberg Mesotech multi-beam sonar, designed to read space where light cannot reach. It sends out pulses, measures their echoes, and paints the shape of the unseen world in dots of sound. At first, the data looked routine. Walls, terraces, sediment ripples. Then, the shapes appeared. Rings. Not random scars or debris marks. Perfect circles, evenly spaced, consistent radii. Repeating geometry drawn across a landscape where nothing should move and nothing should build. The team assumed error. Sonar can fool itself, mirroring, ghosting, generating false reflections when the signal hits a hard boundary. But run after run, heading after heading, the circles remained. They didn't drift. They didn't vanish when the subs changed angle. The rings were real. Each one was sharply defined, like a compass had been pressed into the mud. The distance between them repeated, almost mathematical. No impact splashes, no drag tails. Just precision, written in a place meant for silence. So what could have carved them? Some researchers proposed microbial mats, colonies of extremophiles growing at the interface between sulfide and faint oxygen, shaping sediment as they expanded. Others suggested fluid mechanics, slow, density-driven currents sculpting the floor the way wind shapes dunes. A few pointed to slow methane seeps that can create circular collapse pits when bubbles lift the sediment. And then there was the simplest hypothesis. Objects rolling gently for months or years, moved by imperceptible microcurrents. But each explanation runs into the same wall. Below the sulfide layer, there's no energy to drive motion. No oxygen to feed metabolism. No current strong enough to push a pebble. And yet, the geometry persists, crisp and exact. To some, it's a puzzle in sediment physics. To others, it's a signature. The kind of pattern nature writes when we're not yet fluent enough to read it. The sonar didn't only find circles, it found us. Among the rings lay a plastic bottle, label intact, color still visible. Nearby, a GoPro rested upright, lens staring into the dark as if still filming. When recovered, its memory card held fragments of footage from the surface, a family snorkeling, waves breaking, laughter, then static, then nothing. The bottle and the camera had drifted through the sulfide cloud into the still zone, and there they had stopped. No current had touched them, no scavenger had grazed them. They were preserved, proof that even modern waste can find immortality in a place designed to erase time. That revelation did more than unsettle the scientists. It gave them a control. If the plastic hadn't moved, the floor was stable. If the floor was stable, the circles weren't from motion or drag. They were intentional, or at least persistent beyond chaos. Then came the hardest discovery of all. Near the southern rim of the basin, the sonar detected human remains. Two divers, still wearing their gear, perfectly at rest. No current had disturbed them. No scavenger had stripped them. Their presence was solemn, almost ceremonial, a reminder that curiosity and risk are often the same thing, divided only by luck and depth. The crew decided not to recover the bodies. They left them where they were found because the blue hole had already made them part of its archive. In a place that stops decay, even loss becomes permanent. By the time the submarine surfaced, the team had more questions than answers. 
How can geometry survive where time stands still? Why does a place meant to erase evidence preserve it instead? And what does it mean that our waste now shares the same resting ground as lost explorers? The Great Blue Hole, in one sense, is a perfect experiment. It holds half a million years of data, sea levels, tectonic shifts, even shifts in atmospheric chemistry recorded in mineral layers. It also holds the last century of our existence, the plastics, the cameras, the divers. Geology, chemistry, and humanity, all pressed together in one continuous page. When you read that page from top to bottom, it's like reading the story of Earth in reverse. The living reef above shows what thrives, the sulfide layer shows what dies, and the floor shows what remains, the ledger of everything that refuses to disappear. The mystery of the circles remains. They could be a slow dance of chemistry, or the side effect of invisible forces we haven't yet modeled. Or maybe they're just one more reminder that not all questions exist to be solved. Some are there to show us how much we still don't see, but the deeper message may be simpler and closer to home. Because if plastic bottles and cameras can endure in the blue hole's stillness for decades without change, then the ocean is no longer erasing what we drop into it. It's archiving it. Every dive we make, every object we lose, every choice we let slip beneath the surface. The planet remembers. The Great Blue Hole doesn't just mark sea levels or tectonic tilt. It marks our era, the Anthropocene, where human fingerprints appear even in places untouched by sunlight. So maybe the real mystery isn't what made the circles, but what we've already added to the record. The Blue Hole keeps its secrets. That's what makes it powerful. It doesn't answer. It observes. But as long as we keep sending light into its depths, it will keep reflecting our image back at us, in geometry, in waste, and in memory. So which clue would you follow? The circles that defy explanation? The plastic that outlasts everything? Or the divers who remind us what curiosity can cost? Leave your reasoning below. And remember, in a world that forgets too easily, the ocean does not. It remembers everything we've ever dropped into it and it's still deciding what to do with it.